everybody just wanted to take the time quickly before this video to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel over the weekend we surpassed the 300 subscriber mark which was uh, one of many targets I have so for you guys to take part and help with that I really appreciate it it's great to have you on board the last couple of videos I've really enjoyed making diff something different getting people come on and talking about their experiences and their passions for the mountains and for skiing so a bit more of that to come uh, without further ado on to another ski chat hello everybody welcome back to the channel uh, I'm Matt thanks very much for joining me again today here with another ski chat and today we're going to be talking about uh, winter journalism uh, I'm delighted today uh, to welcome my guest which is uh, Lucy Aspden uh, Lucy works for the Telegraph Travel Desk uh, Lucy, thanks very much for um, coming on today. Uh, why don't you first of all start by telling us a bit about yourself and what you do? So, hi, and thanks for having me. Nice to join you. Um, so, yeah, as you said, I work for the Telegraph Travel Desk, um, and I am in a very fortunate position to look after all their online ski content. So that's everything to do with ski holidays, travel to the Alps, ski resorts, and um, that filters into a lot of what goes into print in the Daily Telegraph and the Sunday Weekend Telegraphs, um, especially at the moment with the news agenda being so hot on um, ski resorts and what's going to happen this ski season. Um, so that's very much what I do. I also look after the social media channels for the Telegraph Ski and Snowboard across Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. So it's really nice to always hear from our readers and engage with the wider snow sports community on there. Um, and apart from that, I'm just a really keen skier who's desperate to get out to the mountains. Aren't we all? Um, would you mind telling me a little bit about, about how you got into the, the role that, that you're doing now? How did that all come about? So I studied for a um, master's degree in magazine journalism um, with an NCTJ qualification. So that's the national qualification for journalism training. Um, and from that, the Telegraph, so this is, gosh, show my age here, about six years ago, nearly seven years ago, they were really big on internships. Um, and being from the Northwest, the only way to really get into the magazine industry or journalism industry at the time was to go and try and get internships in London. And I was very lucky in that one came up on the Telegraph Ski and Snowboard magazine, um, which I got. So that was, I started off as intern on the magazine. Uh, progress to work across some of the events that the Telegraph work on um, and then into specialised into the social media and very much worked really hard to launch the Telegraph Ski and Snowboard social media portfolio um, and then moved on to where I am now which is online editor um, now reporting into the main travel desk um, at the Telegraph so yeah it was the the degree played a huge role in it and I'm really grateful it was a very intense year of my life but really worthwhile um, but then got in did a internship for six months and then the rest is history they can't get rid of me <laughs> and did that was this was it always something that you wanted to do in terms of going into the 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 the, the, the writing part in particular and, and how much did your love of skiing play a part in that it was just by coincidence, really, that I fell into the world of ski journalism. I always knew I wanted to work for magazines, um, in particular like lifestyle, travel, um, women's magazines. When I was at university, that was the idea. Um, I was never really um, a news hound, for want of a better word. Um, and then when the internship came up at the Telegraph, it was in fact my tutor at the time, I'd, I'd asked her to take some time off to be able to go to the Alps skiing. So she knew I was into skiing and she saw the internship come up at the Telegraph and it just so happened it was two passions collided at once and it was part of the interview process really. We had to show that we were passionate about snow sports and ski holidays um, to get the job because that is one thing. I don't think you can work in this industry or in this career unless you're passionate about what you're writing about. I think it's very see-through if you don't know what you're talking about or if you don't love skiing. Mm. And so uh, I'm curious, describe how what a normal day looks like for you then. Well, at the moment, there is no normal day. If you'd asked me a year ago, 
right now on the what is it third of December in fact two years ago today I was out um in the Alps doing my first press trip of the season writing about a new hotel opening everything was really excited it was snowing um at this time of year we'd be coming out with really inspirational um features to for people who were wanting to read them on the way to their own ski holidays but obviously 2020 the rule book has gone out the window and the day-to-day we cannot predict what's going to happen um so at the moment very much i spend my mornings reacting to the latest news finding the latest news and it is so broad covering so much at the moment that's a really big job in itself um i also look after the updating of our resort guides and our gear guides because inevitably people will go skiing again whether it's January, whether it's the spring, whether it's next winter, people will go. So we have a real host of content on the website that is informative um, guides. So I look after that as like a my second part of the job. Um, and then, yeah, uh, social media, making sure all stuff gets out there and people are reading it and getting to speak to people like you and interview people. Yesterday I was interviewing Xavier de la Rue. So it's, it's really varied, especially at the moment when the news agenda is just so wild and we have to try and keep on top of everything. Does it get any quieter in the in the summer months for you or do you get on and, and focus on other dest- on a, like different destinations away from the winter market? That if, if I had a pound for every time someone said to me, oh, you must just be able to take a holiday for the whole of summer, <laughs> I would be rich. And it's no, it's really not the case, actually. Once... Once the season comes to an end in April, May, that's when we start the content strategy and planning the content um, for the following season. So if we think about a normal year, not this year, obviously, um, our traffic and content would pick up usually around September. So all our guides and our information and our features need to be ready really for then. So a lot of that off time in the off season is spent being in touch with resorts, finding out what they're planning for the upcoming winter, in touch with brands and retailers to see what gear is going to be coming out. So it's a really, the summer's a funny time. You get lulled into a false sense of security and then all of a sudden it's September and ski season's upon us. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting enough, that's kind of a similar trade trend actually with, 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 with the videos and obviously around December to September time, summer's finished and you start... If you're a keen skier, you start getting twitchy fingers and, and by October, November time, you're sort of looking at forecasts and um, yeah. I, yeah. Um, so, I mean, one thing, just to go back on, you mentioned press trips. Now, from I've heard from various people that have been on these things that um, they're quite a luxury actually and you do get treated nicely I mean I- explain what what a press trip is and what are the type of things you, you do on it so yes they are a real perk of the job and I am so fortunate to have been able to go to lots of places I otherwise wouldn't have been able to do H- how it tends to work is press trips are used to give journalists an insight and on the ground feel for things such as resort openings or hotel openings or experience the things that are in the outs because inevitably we can't really write very well about these things unless we've experienced them and that is a lot of what travel journalism is about it's about being able to tell the story of what it is like in a destination from personal knowledge. So, yeah, they are a luxury and they're really great. And you get to, there's often other journalists on the trip with you and you get to network with the industry. Um, so, yeah, whether it's a hotel opening or a new resort or a lift opening or a new activity, it, it's ten, it tends to be a resort or a, um, a product way of of promoting any big news they have to do each winter. One of the things I want to pick up on is that the Telegraph used to have the, the, the paper copy of the, the, you know, the, the Telegraph, the ski and snowboard magazine that's going more online now. And you said, obviously, you're involved with that. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about, I guess, sort of the, 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 the story a bit of the magazine and, and where it's at now, how it's come to the format that it's at? So the magazine um, that was the Telegraph Ski and Snowball magazine, and unfortunately the last issue of that came out at the end of last season, and um, that's been around for years and a lot of the skiers in the industry will recognise the magazine. It, it was once the Daily Mail Ski and Snowboard magazine. It was 
believe, by the Metro at some point. It's been around for 30 odd years and it was a really specialist niche title. Um, as with all journalism in the past 10 years, things have undergone a digital transformation. Um, whilst at the Telegraph, we launched a digital version of the magazine um, with interactive segments and that then followed on with the social media portfolio that I launched with um, videos and video snow reports um, and now very much the magazine is no longer in print unfortunately but all the content that we do and still love to do is presented online um, on the Telegraph travel section. Mm. So um, I mean I I I'll admit I'm one of these people who um, doesn't like paying for things but um, obviously, the, the the Telegraph has a has, has a model with with its online thing, with a you know you pay us a fee, a subscription fee to be able to access all the content. Um, what would you say to someone like me? Because I, I I can know plenty of you, people like them who you know who don't want to to pay for that. How what would you say to kind of like convince them to to buy into that to buy into see all that content? Well, it. It's such, it's such a hard question because you are right. There are a lot of people who comment and say, why should I pay for this? And it's paying for the expertise and the knowledge mm. that you won't get elsewhere. The Telegraph is now running on a subscription-first model and it's investing a lot of money into its journalism and its exclusives and its insight and also the way that it presents content to the readers so whether it's graphics or video or it, it's putting a lot of money behind that whereas other publications where you could get content for free don't necessarily have that budget they might they may not I think what people are paying for when they take a subscription out with the Telegraph is a trusted voice um, an expert voice and knowledge of our subject matter um, I mean on the travel desk we really do pride ourselves in knowing what we're writing about and telling the honest truth and getting some of the best exclusives out there. Mm. Are there any particular highlights that have stood out to you since being with the, with, um, the Telegraph from a, a journalist point of view? Like Any particular stories or, or experiences that have come out and stood out for you? I think, number one, my career highlight so far, I mean I should probably get a new one soon, but um, in 2018 uh, we won Best Social Media Campaign of the Year um, at the PPA Digital Awards mm. um, and that was um, a really personal project of mine that was focusing on the transformation of our Facebook page primarily um, and YouTube um, with the use of video content. So in that winter I launched a series of video snow reports live from the Alps and this was actually an industry first, nowhere else was really doing them at the time. I mean, everywhere does them now, it's, it's common sense to do it. Um, but that was really great actually to get a small, we were up against the likes of like Vogue and GQ and Elle, to be up against massive magazines like that and to win such a prestigious award for mm. a little old ski magazine was, I was really proud of that. So in terms of um, career highlights, that will probably be one. In terms of things that I, wouldn't have expected to have done and a highlight in my career. I mean, there's, I've been to so many places I would never ever have dreamt of. I mean, my first trip to Canada two winters ago was an absolute dream come true. Stood at the top of Whistler Mountain and skiing around there with my boyfriend at the time. He had never skied anymore. He skis all the time now, but he was a beginner. And to be stood there with him in France, in Canada, was a real highlight. Make makes it all worthwhile and really gets you to immerse yourself in the industry so that that's that's another highlight but also just day to day like the thrill of seeing your name in print or online or at the top of the home page never really goes away no matter how many years you do this I I had a piece on Monday in the Telegraph business section of all places and they were doing a shout out for ski resorts and the pressure they're under at the moment and I'm really proud of that, like when we can get the news about skiing out to a, a wider audience. Mm. Uh, so I'm really uh, interested to know a little bit more about um, how you guys deal now, say, with like a breaking story, because as, as you mentioned at, at the top of the interview, things are happening all the time at the moment. Um, news stories are developing really, really quickly. Um, how, how would you? How do you guys deal with a developing story now? 
it takes a lot of communication, having real trust in your contacts and real, really trusted sources and voices um, so that you can stay on top of anything that's happening. So it, a, a story might not break, but you might be talking to a contact out in resort or a writer, you know, might be talking to someone who works in the industry and they might just hear a, a rumbling of something going on and it's very much just trying to stay on the pulse with that, asking the right questions until the story breaks. We obviously use traditional methods such as the news wires and social media is so helpful now you can track a story as it develops on twitter pretty much instantly um but it is very much all about communication having really trusted writers and sources in the industry that you can go to or who will inf- will let you know if anything's happening because it is so fast-paced at the moment and i when it's just a single person like me looking after ski it can be overwhelming to try and keep up with it all but luckily I have some really great support out there and um, we're able to cover it, hopefully. I hope you all hope, think, is um, in, a, in a great speedy way with lots of insight and knowledge. So you guys must have an absolute field day, day then when something goes wrong on an airport transfer day somewhere in Europe. I mean, field day would maybe not be the right term. It's... it's up, Personally, I, I hate reporting on bad news because I'm such a passionate skier, but it's the world we live in. And as a journalist, I have to report on what is news and what people need to know about. And it's informative. So, yeah, stories like that come up and they are work and they they are news stories that can go out. But they're not necessarily the most enjoyable thing to write, but they're necessary. You can't ignore big breaking news stories such as that um otherwise you're not really painting a very clear rounded picture to your reader if you mm. just focus on the sunshine and powder days it's not really a very honest honest picture what are your views and what how are you guys covering the current situation within the climate within coronavirus because travel is is an industry not just with winter but across the board that has been really severely affected because because of all the restrictions and the measures um you know actually there's not a lot of travel taking place so so you know what are you guys doing at the moment so a big focus from around june time it might have been earlier we during the first lockdown we launched um on the main travel desk a daily live blog and those are designed to make sure that all the smaller news stories that wouldn't necessarily require a 500 word or 600 word separate piece to make sure that our readers are up to date with absolutely everything that happened and it's a really easy to digest format you scroll through and it's updated every 10 minutes with a different bit of an update and I think that's a great way for journalism to report on the current situation because everything is happening so quickly um, and so fast, it makes sure that there is no stone unturned and everyone sees the full picture. Um, in terms of how do you cover travel when people can't travel, it is very much news at the moment. Like we are, a lot of what I'm looking at is what regulations will be in place this winter. Where's open is a changing story almost daily. Um, how people can get to resort. I'm seeing huge appetite from our readers for advice on who to book with and when to book or insurance, things like that, that people want reassurance from a knowledgeable source. That's kind of the content that's going out at the moment. But we are in the planning for we will be able to travel again. So there is the occasional inspirational piece and we have so many of those in the pipeline ready to go when people can travel to these destinations um, to really inspire them. So it, it very much is advice and news and reaction at the moment, but that inspirational stuff is still bubbling away in the background. Again, sort of talking about particularly bringing it back to now, I mean, within the, the ski industry, now is a really, really crucial time, as you said, um, measures and restrictions are are changing all the time and it can be quite hard at times to sort of keep keep track of it would you say it's it's really hard to keep track but like i said before as long as you've got the right communication and you're speaking to people regularly you can kind of see how the story is going to unfold um this week for example 
Um, we've just it's been the follow up to what happened last week. So last week Italy started the whole row around there should be a Europe wide ban on ski resorts opening, and it's just following the story as it progresses, and you can almost foresee, especially at the moment, where that's going to go. Um, I mean, at the, at the start of the coronavirus crisis, we couldn't foresee anything, and we had no idea what was going to happen, and it was very much react as it happened but as things are becoming a bit a bit clearer and there's vaccine news and cutting of quarantine we are getting hopefully a more stable picture as to what content we can plan for the future so do you think there's going to be a there will be a ski season then this this winter i am holding out for it i think definitely like february onwards i think i there has to be a chance. I don't think we can give up hope on uh, skiing in the spring. Don't know how January will pan out now. I was hoping to get out there in Jan, um, but the restrictions from Italy and Austrian places this week are suggesting they'll lift measures early to mid-January. So, yeah, I think February half-term onwards is our best bet at the moment, Um, and I refuse to give up hope because if I give up hope... (laughs) We've got to wait a whole other year. So, yeah, it's just see how it goes, just react how it happens, react to everything that happens and just remain hopeful. I'm like you, trying to trying to stay positive and uh, you just sort of yeah. keep trying to look at that despite what has taken place over the last few few days. Um, so let's, let's leave coronavirus and talk about sort of from a journalist standpoint with the, with the, with the winter industry as well. Uh, December the 31st is quite an important date. Obviously, after that, we are effectively post-Brexit. Um, and there are a number of other um, uh, online media media associations that were covering the story the other week in regards to Brexit and how it might affect the winter sports industry with, and, and seasonal jobs as a, as a whole. Um, how are you guys covering that? What are your thoughts on, on, on that situation moving forward? It's such a tricky one to talk about. Again, and we, we have left COVID behind, but it's because there is so much unknown still. And no one really knows what is going to happen. I think the way we're covering it at the moment, I hate to admit it has slipped down the news agenda. Um, whether that's a good thing or not, I, I, I don't know. Um, at first, people were just intrigued what it was going to mean for their, again, it's advice, what it's going to mean for them, what it means for their ski holidays. That That's how we will cover it from a consumer perspective, is answering those frequently asked questions about the healthcare insurance. Um, but there are big stories there around like ski season airs and chalets and the impact this is going to be. But... Um, until we get some definite answers, it, it's really hard to say how it'll be covered. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you there. It's one of those ones where you're gonna have you're gonna have to wait until actually afterwards when things start to become clearer. So then you can actually report on those things, get out there and in, inform people and put people's minds at rest. Or people will then realise, okay, now I need to get a, a working visa or or, or want to uh, want to travel. Yeah, exactly. It's very much going to be learning on the ground, which has been the case for the news agenda as well this year. So, yeah. You mentioned, obviously, that in the last 10 years, um, journalism has it, gone under a massive digital transformation. What are the current challenges that, that you guys face? Oh, that's a good question. Incorrect news elsewhere on the web doesn't help because you always have to, that doesn't help when people get fed wrong stories challenges the fact we can't travel and report on the ground <laughs> that is at the moment if i was to pick a challenge that hits me day to day it's finding people on the ground in places to give me an honest and knowledgeable report because if people are grounded they can't get out there mm. but there aren't many challenges to journalism at the moment. Um, if anything, there's just opportunity, the growth of podcasts, the growth of video, um, new digital formats. And the Telegraph website has been going undergoing a redesign. And I think the article's look really great. It's 
it's a really exciting world to be in when there is so much change and development. Um, even in the print sections, they've had redesigns and they're using a lot more graphics and image led, and that's really exciting. So no, there's not many challenges apart from apart from the obvious get over the hurdles of what what is actually news. But yeah, I think it's a really positive industry to be in in terms of opportunity and, and growth. Yeah. In your opinion, where might where where will the industry be in five five years time? I think they'll be. We're certainly seeing it um, a bit with the ski section and travel articles. People are shifting back to enjoying long, long reads. I think about two, three, four years ago, there was a real shift to like short, sharp, snappy, read, read it really quickly on your phone um, while you're on the train in the morning stories. But there's, they're slowly edging back to longer reads, really immersive reads, um, spending time on a page, watching videos, looking at the pictures, using the graphics, mm. and also just, there'll be a, I think there'll be a real demand for the knowledge and the expertise and the reputation as people discover what news outlet they can trust and which ones they prefer to read. So it's, there's a real shift to like really quality journalism rather than short, snappy, get it out there and um, forget about it later there's real passion behind journalism going forward yeah when you guys go out and obviously you, you mentioned uh, pre press trips as, as one sort of activity so do you guys partner up with um, uh, certain tourist organizations uh, tour operators I mean I see you guys online work quite a lot with crystal if I'm right yeah, so that is, that's actually nothing to do with what I do as an editor. So there's very much a clear distinction at the Telegraph between the commercial um, and the editorial. So there's a whole dedica dedicated team that look after commercial partnerships like the one you're referencing to Crystal. With regards to press trips, they're solely down to editorial integrity. It's always what stories we cover um, what resorts we cover, what operators, what, what stories we look into are solely down to the integrity of the editor or the writer. There's that freedom of choice from our, from our editorial side. So, yeah, that, that's, there's a very much clear split. There's no, oh, Crystal, a uh, commercial partner, so you must go do this. It's, that's one of the great things of working at The Telegraph. Um, there's two teams that look after each separate side um, and everything is, is really honest. It means that you can trust the journalism you're reading. Mm. Okay, so you said that was a good thing about The Telegraph. What is uh, the best thing for you about working at The Telegraph? I think it's, like I was saying, the opportunities that are happening at The Telegraph at the moment, the investment they're making into their journalism. I think mm. if you told someone seven, eight, years ago oh yeah there'll be investment in journalism and in media in the next decade people might not have believed you because it, it is a struggling industry in some respects in terms of ad revenue and ad spend um so yeah it's a great place to be when you're given so much freedom to look into stories spend time researching stories getting the expert advice and insight um and it's a really trusted voice and a really trusted brand so yeah, I, I am always quite proud when it, my name's up on that um, that Telegraph page. What would you say? What would be your advice to any budding young aspiring winter sports journalist? I'd say just start writing about your ski trip. So that's what I did. I remember going to the Telegraph for my interview, and I had a portfolio with me from my degree, and a couple of the stories in there were were articles that I'd written about ski holidays I'd been on. So it, it, it gives you that experience of writing about ski holiday because there is a real knack to it. Um, travel writing isn't easy. It's it's great fun, but it does take a bit of skill um, to get to get used to it. And I'm still learning that as well, and I'm six years in. So, yeah, just, like, enjoy the trips you go on and write about them. Think how you could document them. When you're out in the mountains, think about how would this present itself best on Instagram, Facebook, and as a story. Just like stay on top of the news as well. The Luckily, the ski industry is so well connected across social media, some great groups, great conversations that go on. Immerse yourself in that. 
start building contacts, talking to the right people, because everyone gets on. I mean, we're all skiers in this, so we're all in it for the, the same goal and the same the same thrills on the slope. So, mm-hmm. yeah, just get immerse yourself in it and just give it a go, because you just never know. I never thought I'd be in the position I am when I joined the Telegraph six years ago. So um, it, it just, it all unfolds as, as you get into it. Mm. Listen, Lucy, I really appreciate you taking the time today to give a bit of insight into uh, what it is that you do and giving information about about the paper, the, the Telegraph um, and, yeah, giving some advice to, to anyone who, who would want to get involved with uh, the, the work that you do. No problem at all. And the, that, that I should reiterate that if you ever wanted to get into journalism or ski journalism, travel journalism, anything, just pitch and keep trying and you might get turned down but keep going and there will be that idea that is really unique that no one's thought of that will just be that break and then you never know you'll be stood on the top of Whistler Mountain like I was thinking how on earth did I get here and how is this my job well listen thanks very much and and I I will say as we end here you have actually convinced me um to to subscribe up to the telegraph so i'm going to go in there and i'm going to check out some of the new content fantastic well there you go my job's done for the week (laughs) brilliant listen thanks very much lucy and uh take care no problem thank you so much